All right, so here we go. We're going to finish up this portion of uh, chapter 8, uh, section 810. And I just want to show you where, so we're on example three. This is part two. Example three, no solution and infinitely many solutions. So this is another thing. So you remember the last time we were together, we were looking at lines. We saw that they intersect. If they intersect in that point, that's called the solution. That doesn't always happen. We may not always get a solution. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So this first example, I'm going to do this first example and um, see if we can uh, figure out what, um, might happen. What are some other things that might happen? So here we go. As I look at this guy, I see y is equal to negative x plus 1. I know that I can graph this with relative ease. The y-intercept is a positive 1. And the slope is negative 1. So I'll, for, for kicks and giggles, I'll call this my red equation. So I'm going to go down 1. Or well, this is my red problem. I'll do the both of them in red. I'm going to go down 1 and um, back and to the right 1 because my slope is negative one. So I've got to go down one. And, so negative over a positive, negative over positive is a negative. Are you with me? I hope so. And then when I graph that, so when I graph that first equation, I'll do that line and I get this, I get this line here. So now I've got to graph this next one and I'll do that by doing the same thing. My Y intercept is negative three. So I'm going to come down to negative three and put a dot here. And then my slope is the same negative one slope, going down one to the right one, down one to the right one, up one to the right, up one to the left, up one to the left. And when I graph my line, and I used a dotted line here and a dotted line here so we could differentiate. When I graph that line, notice those two lines never intersect, right? They don't intersect. And what do we call lines that don't intersect? Do you guys remember? They're called parallel. So when I have a situation where my lines are parallel, I graph the two lines and they are parallel, what I find is that there is no solution, okay? Because remember, a solution is when they intersect. So that's one situation where we have no solution. This next example, we can call this part two, is an example where we're going to have infinitely many solutions. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have another graph grid here, and I'm going to make this equation green. Um, and I just chose dotted just because it was convenient. And this equation will be done in blue. But I need to do a little bit of manipulation here. This is one half y is equal to x minus um, is equal to one half y minus x is equal to two. And what I'm going to do is do a little bit of adjustment here, so that things can work out in a way that I want. And what I'll do is. That one half is bothering me, so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by two. And then once I do that, distributive property over here gives me y, because one half, two times one half is one, so that's one y, minus two x is equal to four. And look at what, what I do. I'm just going to move this over to the other side, so I have y is equal to a positive two x plus four. Four. So that's my blue equation and that's my group. What? They're the same equation. And when we have that situation happen, you're going to see that if I graph y equals 2x plus 4, let's say I'm thinking about it as a green equation, this one here, right? If I graph that, I'm going to go to the y-intercept, which is a positive 4. I'm going to use my slope, rise 2, run 1, or drop down 2, back 1. Notice I get that positive, um, that positive graph. I'm going to choose my um, green, green, uh, let's see, do I have the right thing? I'm going to choose my green gr uh, line, draw that in, and let's do the same thing. So what if I'm going to now graph the blue one? Well, the blue one's exactly the same. Yes, it is. So if I graph it, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Yes, I will. I'll go up to down over to grab my green. You, you see where this is going, right? So what points do these two lines have in common? That's really the question. What are the points that these two lines have in common? They have every point in common, okay? So when we have a situation where both of our equations are the same, they lay directly on top of each other. So it's not that they have one thing in common where they intersect one time, they intersect infinitely many times. And so the solution to this guy, let me get my pen back, is infinitely, infinitely many solutions. So you have infinitely many solutions as we have written here. So those are the two situations that can happen. One more example and then a little chat and then we will be um, good to go. Let me see if I can grab that next one. No, that's not the one. 
This is not the one. Let me see if I can find it. Got to get my face out of the way. There we go. This is the one. No, that's not the one. This is the one. Yes. Okay. So there's this. I told you guys in the beginning that we would be doing a lot of graphing. So we did graphing all the time. Now we're going to actually go ahead and solve this by substitution, which is beautiful, which is a wonderful thing. So here we have a system of equations, y is equal to x plus 2 and y is equal to 5. And what I'm going to do is I could totally graph this, right? Do y is equal to x plus 2, which would look something like this, y is equal to 5, that would look like this, find out what this point is, and I'd be done. And that's good because these numbers work out nicely, but substitution gives us even more power. That power is, since y is equal to 5, since I know what y is equal to, I'm just going to plug it in there. And then so when I do that, I get 5, right? Instead of y, I'm going to put 5 is equal to x plus 2. Now, everybody in our class can solve this with their eyes closed, but just for kicks and giggles, I will take my time and solve it. I'm going to subtract negative 2 from both sides. x is therefore equal to 3. So our solution is this. Y was given to us, Y is equal to 5, and X is equal to 3, and we found the answer. So if I were to graph these, I'd find that this point was 3 and 1, what is it, 2, 3, 4, 5. This point was 3, 5, and that is substitution. So substitution is plugging in um, one equation into another when you have solved for Y. You might have a little bit more challenging ones than this. So we'll talk in class about it. I can't wait for you to work on those. But before we get to that, I want to look at this one last kind of clarifying thing that I want to talk about. So our concept summary, because we've been all over the place and this was a long lesson. The first thing I want you to know is that when we have a graph, our graph could be, um, I probably should have had more, but if we have a graph, our graph could be like this, where we have, uh, let's use uh, white, where we have one um, line that does that and one line that does that. And when we have that, the number of solutions that we have is one solution. Right? We've got one solution and that one solution is where these guys intersect. The other situation that we could have that we saw um, in our example, I think it was example uh, four, was that the two lines could be parallel. And when we have parallel lines, there's no solution at all because there's no intersection. So that's no solution. When we graph our lines, or if we graph our lines and we find us, ourselves in a situation where we get um, one line, right, that happens to be exactly the same as the other line, so I've got that white line and this green line laying right on top of each other. What that is, is that there are infinitely many solutions, infinitely many solutions. And that is encapsulating the concepts that we're going to talk about today and that you're going to be working on in Section 810. So I know that this is challenging, but I think that you guys are up for the challenge. And I can't wait to talk to you in class tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.